Listen, there is definitely more than one way that you can carry out your hair routine, but you definitely don't need to be doing all of the things that you see on the internet, especially. Now, I don't blame you. I too went down the very rocky road of discovering my curls and understanding my hair routine, and it took most of my youth, all throughout my teens, and into hair school to understand how to really be styling. And now I wanna save you the time, the headache, and even the money, because I have seen some interesting routines on my FYP and IG, and it leaves me wondering, Bestie, why are you doing this to your hair? How you should style your hair depends on your hair's texture, the porosity, and the result that you're looking for. So instead of wasting time, product, and weighing your hair down, throughout this very beginner-friendly video, I'm going to quickly walk you through steps in your routine that you should definitely just be skipping. I'll be doing my own hair along the way to show you what to do versus what not to do, because I am here for you. I'm Mel, your main girl, licensed hairstylist, and curl specialist. No matter if you're wavy, curly, or coily, these are the silent steps that don't make sense. Let's get to it. All right, so just a quick note, the order of steps and missteps that we're gonna talk about are going to be in the order of my hair routine. So beginning with before shampooing, the first thing I see people do is use a deep conditioner or conditioner before shampoo. Now I can see why people are doing this, even though I don't want to see people do this, and it's because they wanna have their hair nice and conditioned and detangled before shampooing. But if you are doing that, I hope you're using something cheap because it's all rinsing down the sink or the shower, which I'm about to endure, endure, if you are newer. I do like to rhyme, even when I shouldn't. Anyways, the bottom line is conditioner before shampoo is a waste. If you're gonna do anything, just do an oil treatment. You can still use an oil to do a little bit of detangling without wasting money on a product that isn't going to absorb properly into your hair because it's dirty. So let's wash it. And I mean wash it, so watch it. If you are using a no-poo method or co-washing hair that hasn't been washed for more than three days, not only is this a waste, but it's a disservice to your hair and scalp. Co-washing, aka conditioner washing, is using a conditioning product to very gently cleanse your hair, but it's very gentle as it is not really gonna cleanse your hair. And so right now, if that's something that you're using in between washes and you're not washing your hair more than three times a week, then co-wash is not something that you need. BRB while I get shampooing and conditioning. All right, I've shampooed and I ask you, what's the number one thing that you see people with curly and wavy hair do? It's scrunching. Why? Because scrunching encourages the curl, but you don't need to do too much and you don't need to do it all throughout your routine. Although if you're going to, honey, I'd rather you do it off the scalp. We definitely don't want to be applying conditioner directly on our scalps. That's a waste of time and money. It's a product to moisturize and hydrate your hair and also protect it with this coating that's gonna to help to fill in any cracks in your strands. These are things that influence your hair's porosity and the more porosity you have, the more thorough you wanna be with your conditioner and apply it in this action of smoothing. This will actually effectively apply and help tame your frizz way more than just scrunching in your conditioner. Now, if you are having issues detangling your hair, before adding a lot more conditioner, try adding water. This side of my hair was almost effortlessly detangled. You can see that the conditioner almost looks a little foamy and that's because I added water to it. So on this side of my head, it's got the conditioner thoroughly applied, but it's very tangly. And I could spend a long time trying to detangle, but I'm gonna add some water and that helps to loosen things up to help me detangle almost instantly. Now another thing, I've applied a deep conditioner to my hair, but it wouldn't make sense to use a deep conditioner if you don't have anything really to treat. The curlier community will tell you loud and proud that you should always be deep conditioning, but just know that is not the case if your hair is healthy. Otherwise, if you're using these, you could just be weighing your hair down. Now if your hair isn't healthy, for example, if your curl pattern has been impacted by color, bleach, keratin, heat, in that case, is it bouncing back like these? Some people recommend curl training, and that is twisting your hair while it is deep conditioning so that it is in kind of a curled state while it is getting a, a treatment. This isn't going to revitalize your curl pattern. Unfortunately, this is not how the bonds of our hair operate. So if you are someone that's spending time with their conditioner in their hair, twisting every single strand, only to rinse it out afterwards and then go in and style, 
then this is a huge waste of your time that's not necessary because it's not effective. Now I'm gonna get rinsing because if you're leaving your deep conditioner in longer than half an hour or as directed on the bottle, then this is also wasting your time when you could get straight into styling. This will always be one of my favorite deep conditioners, period. I didn't show you properly, but obviously, Eva NYC. And you know what I've always thought this is a dupe for? The Redken mask, which Redken is not cruelty free. This is an affordable dupe and is cruelty free. It literally can't be beat. Now, if the first thing you're doing when you come out of the shower is put a towel on your head, think again. What I recommend is bringing a claw clip into the shower with you so after you finish rinsing out your conditioner, you can clip your hair away. Now it's off of your body, not dripping. Now this isn't the biggest deal because yes, you could just go back in and re-wet your hair, but it is a step that you can skip because when the hair is fully wet and fresh, it's gonna better absorb our styling products. And that's also gonna help result in less frizz. Now this is the part that I don't think people understand and it's ruining their strength. When we're styling, it's really important to use products that are made for your hair's texture. For example, many people will assume that just because their hair is curly, it must be coarse. And you know, coarse hair is super unruly and it needs thick butters. Or they might think that their hair is really dry so it needs some really heavy conditioners. Or even that their hair is really fine and they can't use products like oils. There is always a product for you. Specifically, this is brand new. I partnered with Eva NYC to share their new 10-in-1 Main Magic Primer for fine hair. It has a near identical formula to the regular primer, which I have been using for years now, but they relaunched it for fine hair. And this honestly made my heart sing because it has the exact same 10 benefits as the regular primer. To quickly list, it strengthens, it's a heat protector, it's got 24 hour frizz and static protection. It cuts drying time, it detangles, it's non-greasy, well, actually, that's what differentiates these. My fine hair curlies, you can still get the benefits of argan oil and sunflower oil that are in these products that also help with UV protection, softens, moisturizes, and reduces breakage, but in a non-greasy formula. So that's the one that I'm using today. My strands are fine to medium, and I can apply this generously over my hair, and I know that this is gonna prime me for the rest of my styling, and it gives my hair a lot of slip. So when I go in and style it, which I often use tools like brushes, it's gonna help make all of that a lot easier. Now this just launched. If you've liked the old Main Magic Primer, but you found it to be a little bit heavy, you had to use it very sparingly, this is gonna be great for your fine hair. I'll have details for it in the description box below so you can go check it out. Feel free to use this if you are wavy, curly, or coily, and if you're wearing it curly or straightening. And I want to thank my long-term partners at Eva NYC for coming out with something for fine hair curlies. And in general, hopping on the wave of coming out with products for your hair's texture, not your curl pattern. It's super important to understand what your hair's texture and porosity is before applying your product. The lower porosity your hair is, the more humectants you want in your products. And the higher porosity your hair is, the more emollients you want in your product. And the more longevity you want out of your style, the more gel you need to use. Quick question, do you apply product to your hair? I'm asking you this because what I've learned with dealing with so many different people is that most of us, not me, most of you don't know how to properly apply product. And it's not your fault. Here's the thing though, if you are gonna use a gel or a foam in your routine, you wanna use first your cream. Put it this way, there's three phases of styling your curly hair. Your prep products, your styling products, and your finishing products. Products from each of these categories are applied in that order. Prep, style, finish. We prep by conditioning our hair. That could be by applying a leave-in conditioner or a primer like we just did. And step two is to style. When we style, we're shaping the curls for how we want them to look at the end result. Now, if you are using gel before you're using cream, you're not gonna get the same hold and longevity. So in a nutshell, it's gel after cream or cream before gel. Although you can skip cream just as I am doing if you have already conditioned your hair and applied your primer, your prep product. And I repeat, you do not need to do any scrunching if you're just gonna go in after and start brushing. Save the scrunching to the end. Now while you're styling, if you feel like your hair is not absorbing the product well, it still feels dry as you're styling, before reaching for more product, always grab your water. You might be applying way too much product, which is just gonna weigh your hair down, 
And you could have just added some water. Now this might look like a silent step that doesn't make sense. Why are you brushing the hair to define it? But trust the process. Now I've just about finished styling. I can take my towel and do a little bit of towel drying, which is something you want to be very gentle with. What doesn't make sense is to not dry your hair, especially if you are just going to be out in humidity. Trying to dry your wet hair in a really humid environment is not gonna dry. It's gonna take a very, very long time. Your hair won't know what to do with all of the moisture available to it. It can actually be damaging to your strands. It's not good to leave your hair wet for a long time. And so this is gonna result in a lot of frizz. All of your styling, all of this time that we put into styling is basically a waste if you're just gonna be air drying, especially in humidity. Now I'm gonna go diffuse my hair with heat because I'm protected from my primer and I'll be back with the finished results and final remarks. Ta-da! I mean, the shine is there, but what's not is any kind of residue. This just feels so soft, like curl. This routine took me a total of six products. If you're counting both the diffuser and hair dryer and the DIY oil that I used before washing. These are the basics of a healthy hair care routine catered to your personal hair care needs to save you product and get your hair done more efficiently. I hope you found this very beginner friendly video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I will let you know what other beginner friendly videos you should see in the description box below. But before you get rid of me so quickly, there's a few questions from my last video that I want to answer in our end of video Q&A that we do. I'm actually gonna answer a few because this is a quick video. And while you are down there, make sure you're subscribed to me and turn the bell notifications on so you know when we post new videos each and every texture Thursday. In last week's video, we answered a question regarding red flags during your hair appointment. We got a follow-up question asking how do you politely get out of an appointment that you're not comfortable moving forward with? If you are in the chair of a stylist that is giving you bad vibes and you do not feel comfortable proceeding, and if you're not confrontational, I would kind of pretend that you got like an emergency. Th this is bad. Like knock on all the woods when you leave, but pretend that you're getting an emergency phone call and that you have to go. Especially if they're a nice person. That way you don't have to break it to them that like, listen, I don't think I trust you with my hairdo. Alternatively, you could maybe just ask them to do a wash and style. That way you're not completely canceling your appointment. And it's a great way for you to see how comfortable they are at doing curls, especially your hair. If they can style your hair, hopefully they'll have a good idea of how to cut it and execute the rest of what you might be looking for. Or if they're not really giving you the time of day and like the consultation, you're not feeling heard, they're a little bit rude, I would be straight up with them back and say, you know, unfortunately, I'm not sure you're understanding my hair's needs and what I'm looking for. And I would feel much more comfortable letting another stylist do this whatever you're looking for. It's all in how you word it. You don't have to completely put them down, but also put your foot down for you. Walk out of there if you have to. Especially if question number two, they try to use thinning shears on your curls, especially without consulting you or explaining to you why this is going to be a good thing. 99.99999 times out of 10, thinning shears are a bad thing for curly hair because it doesn't cut every strand of hair in the section that you're cutting and it will shatter whatever curls you are thinning resulting in a lot of frizz and a lack of definition. There are other ways that you can texturize curly hair, but we'll have to save all that for another video. I think we do have time for one more question though. Kendall asks, can not washing your hair enough lead to an oil buildup that causes hair loss? It's an extreme case, but yes. Not cleansing your scalp enough leads to poor hygiene and that can become really irritating on your scalp leading to a buildup that can cause either dermatitis or folliculitis. These are like fungal infections and bacterial infections on the scalp, which if left untreated can cause issues on the scalp like hair loss, mostly caused by the amount of itching that is gonna happen, which leads to scratching. Oh, this is good though. But no, because if you're aggressive, it can lead to scarring. So keep the scalp clean, wash at a minimum. It's different for everyone, but at a minimum once a week, if you're working out often, like. Me now. <laughs> Let's do it more frequently. All right, that's all for me. Thank you so much for watching. There is a big video coming next week and we kind of hinted on what it's going to be in this video. If you can guess what it is, comment what you think in the comment section below and you'll see me again soon. I love you and I appreciate you. Peace. <laughs> Spray bottle, but it is a skeptic.
skip that you can skip. Scary! So quickly list, it strengthens, it's a heat protector, 24 hour flip, for, blah, 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 we're rolling. Actually, uh, this is day three, a little behind the scenes. I'm filming the intro outro today because it's sunny, so I'm trying to recreate my look. Good thing my makeup was my, oh no. I kept the look fresh, basically, my everyday. This is a Bobbi Brown Lux Defining Lipstick in Romantic. Do you want to kiss? Okay, check it, check it, check it. Check. Oh. I was gonna maybe add a serum, but I'm just gonna put on a little bit more of the primer because it's not a water formula, it's waterless. So it's not gonna wet it, it's just gonna help to add a little, a little shine again. This product is supposed to be used on damp hair, but I like to use it to reapply my UV protection. I'm sorry, but the sun is this shining. Remember, you can get you some in the description box below. I'll put the links to this and the other products I use in the routine because you know what I used when I was deep conditioning. I can love you better. I can love you better, baby. I can love me better. I can love me better. And uh, do you think that the lighting is good? Let's get blue it. Let's get through it. I salute you and your curly hair routine.